All right, so we'll start on that side of the table. Formosa tea, what do you think? Uh, it's really cool. I really enjoy, it's not difficult mechanically, but there's a lot, the interlocking stuff of like playing out when you put someone in processing versus farming is really interesting. Um, I really enjoy it and t definitely want to play it again and have a better showing. <laughs> it wasn't a poor showing. Right? <laughs> it really wasn't bad, but it still wasn't bad. It wasn't like you got lacked. No, that's then, true. Uh, you know, we're like 44 points in Trias Magistus. I expect better from myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Sher? I, I really like it. It's it's mechanically very interesting. The timing is is super, like, super interesting. It, uh, I, there's mistakes I made <laughs> completely mistakes I made, uh, uh, but but I really enjoy I really enjoy the uh, the processing that the, it, there there's a uh, it reminds oh it doesn't remind me of the game but but um, uh, but Urban Sprawl which is a game I really enjoy not because I find it I think it's 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 like amazing in terms of like like how how if like how um, how the game. Like how you uh, the, how you get to uh, like how the game manages the the players, but how I mean, mechanically it works. Okay. And I find this is this is kind of like that. Like I love the mechanics of how this works and how your T comes across the board, and um, and that's what I like about it. Um, mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, all right. Go ahead, Greg, and I'll piggyback kind of what you said though here in a minute. Go ahead. So I, I think that the timing is definitely a key factor in what makes the game pace enjoyable because without the weird timing that goes into processing and putting stuff in um, it just become it would just be a worker placement game where you just do a thing pull a lever um, but the fact that there's this weird cooperation aspect where you don't want to help but I need it too so I'm gonna help um, it, it becomes really more than the sum of its parts. I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And the timing aspect, there's also a, a balance aspect of not just when do I go here versus here, but if I go here earlier, there's a better chance that somebody will come out here and bump me along. But I'm doing that sacrificing possibly ideal uh, harvesting of tea out here as opposed to um, going here early to get those free bumps. So it's it, it's... To me, that's the most interesting uh, teeter-totter, give-and-take, mm -hmm. you know, push-pull type thing of which is more important to me right now. And then trying to figure out how to, oh, I really desperately need that one bump on this tech track, so how do I go about doing that? Do I, do I focus on go ahead and try and get a tech bump from the domestic market, or can I, do I have enough tea? I only have three or four. Do I waste an action to get a fifth to be able to get another tech bump? And it's it's definitely tough decisions. They're not hard decisions, but they're tough. Yeah. Hard being it's not complex. It's just you don't want to sacrifice the things that you would have to sacrifice yep. to do the things you want to do, which to me is the hallmark of a good game. And I really, really enjoy this. Plus, I think the theme is brought through very well mm -hmm. because one thing that I do want to point out and I didn't really mention this during the teach is there are a lot of steps in the in the processing of tea just in real life and these are actually the steps so the withering the fixation mm -hmm. the rolling the drying um, oxidation depending on the type of tea and everything else and the the when do you stop the oxidation of all of these it's it's fascinating to me as a as somebody who really enjoys drinking tea, um, it's more than just flavored water, right? So, yeah, I, I think it's fascinating. I didn't know the difference between flavoring versus scenting, mm -hmm. but this game inspired me to want to go, and I did more reading than I ever thought I would on <laughs> Wikipedia and other websites, just reading about the process yeah. of tea. I, I'll be honest, I thought it was, not kidding, I thought it was simple as, pick it off and dry it. Thought that was it. Nope. nope. <laughs> There's a lot of steps depending yeah. on uh, depending on the type of tea. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right about the theme. It, it's uh, it is often a, a lot of games you just play and you're 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 pushing buttons, you're, you're moving cubes around here and you're completely absent of any sort of theme. You might see a little bit here and there. It might see be a card that has some interesting art but doesn't really 
make you think about the theme. This is everything about this. Like this is you're setting up a processing uh, engine for like your like making different kinds of tea, and it really shines through. And that's unusual in you know many like just not, not most euros for yeah. sure. And I, I do like one of the uh, thematic tie-ins that I, I think is interesting. I'm not sure if this is their intention, but the fact that on the merchant cards, if you sell them crap tea, they'll sell it. They'll find a way to push it. But you've lost that connection because you just gave them yeah. subpar tea. <laughs> they'll, yeah, exactly. They'll right. buy it from you, but you've burnt that bridge with them specifically. Yeah, right? your reputation suffers. Right, yeah. it does. And I, I think that's, it's subtle, yeah. but I think that's a really good, really good, interesting way of the theme coming yeah. through as well. I think my favorite thing is the idea, like the idea when you start processing, you have the decision in front of you of like, I could take my time with this and make some really good stuff. But maybe I just want to shovel this thing out the door and like get it going and like sell it in the local market. Cause they'll eat, they'll drink anything. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's that caffeine boost. That's all they want. <laughs> That's all they care about. So yeah, um, this was really high on my anticipation list, uh, partially because of the theme. Um, and I gotta say, it's lived up to it. Is it ZOMG amazing? This is you know a top ten game for me. No, it's not. Um, is it a really good game at what it does? Yeah. I think it is. Is it a game that uh, I would say, hey, do you want to play this again? Yeah, it is. Is it something that is going to be, I'm going to be clamoring to play at this point? I've played it now three or four times. No, but I would happily play it again. I definitely want to play it again, uh, but with the characters. So yeah, why don't we uh, and, and keep talking about? Uh, so uh, Andrew, you said you already do want to. Oh, right? totally. I mean, yes, I've only played it once, so I'm, I'm probably still in that stage of like oh, I want to figure this out and like. Uh, but I, I think there's just a lot of really interesting, like the fact, the player interaction in this makes it more than just a standard worker placement, right? So that's why I think it just shines for me. Like it just is a thing where you can plan as much as you want, but you also have to kind of anticipate what other people are doing. So, like, I would definitely uh, play this, and you know, as soon as possible. Shrey? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, the same. It's, uh, I, I definitely, I, I just, I, like I said, I see them, see them mis at least two mistakes I made, <laughs> <laughs> and, and want to see if I can correct those uh, in, in the next play, and, and this is in our first in the first play where we were struggling with the rules a bit. You know, we were we were a bunch behind um, because we we're you know we we're making mistakes uh, on right. the rules. And and the game we played a few days ago, you 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 were up in this range, um, I think. Yeah, I, I and, just eclipsed a hundred yeah. or so. Yeah, and and I and I see that that like. We are getting better at at at, at yes. understanding how to work the system, and uh, and now and now like understanding the interaction is is where I think a lot of points are are to be had. Like I agree. And one other thing on that note is I'm really curious. I got all these flower pods and didn't use a single one of them. Yeah. I wonder if I could have done a better job if I could have found a way to. I mean, yeah, you ended second place by one point, but you also ended with 15 in your cupboard. I did. Yeah, oh, yeah, which true. that is that is really frustrating. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. five excellent tea I didn't do anything with. And I won with nothing left. Right. Yep. So, yeah, so, my, so you had... You have, oh, sorry. Go ahead. So you had two, two people in the, uh, harvesting right. this turn. Uh, were they there to push your people along with it? They, yes. Yeah. Both of them were right. to push guys yeah. along here. And that, right? that feels... That feels inefficient on the fourth turn, right? So agreed. Um, <laughs> so there's definitely room for improvement, yeah. right? Um, so that's that's a good thing, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to show everybody: we were talking about the advanced game. So we played just standard. We randomly drew two cubes out for each of us. But in the advanced game, there are these characters here, as well as one more that didn't fit on screen. But there you go. So uh, John Dodd, um, right there. Uh, so that was one of the events on this, but we have actually, there's a little historical bit on all of these, and they all have different asymmetric kind of things, like here, whenever you harvest, you get an extra uh, cube type thing, or at the start, you get a bump on the black tee, and um, I think that's, you get every time you get to advance one extra, 
with uh, Arai Kokichiro. Yeah, yeah, that's what that is. Um, so yeah, they're all different asymmetric starts, but they do kind of, I don't want to say put you on rails, but definitely want you to focus on very specific goals, um, depending on how all of these things play out. So do I think these have legs? Yes. Do I think they're needed? No, but I would be interested in playing them for sure. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so yeah, the game definitely has more legs, and I'm three plays into it. I think it's got at least probably another five, six plays in it for me if I wanted to, if we weren't churning through mm. being on the show. Um, yeah, so overall, um, well done. So again, a big thank you to Smooks over at TBD at Taiwan Board Game Design uh, and to SoSo uh, so -So Studio for giving us the review copy of this at Spiel so we could bring it to y'all. Um, a big thank you to these fellas for coming in to play this tonight, although it, it's a tough life. They have to come and play games. How so horrible. Right, it's, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> what was us? You're right. <laughs> and a big thank you to everybody that watched, uh, both live as well as after the fact. Really appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy it, again, like, subscribe, do all that. You want to help us, uh, help the show, and get towards 800 patrons, would appreciate it. But you also get benefits. You get access to the Slack channel, teaching notes, and other uh, special perks for being a patron of Heavy Cardboard. You can go to pledgehc.com to do so.